Chris from Tech Tablets here with the Pipo W8 hands-on here in Windows just looking at various benchmarks here of the drive speeds so just down here is the SSD 482 almost 500 megabytes read per second sequential and almost 170 right that's not bad at all considering it is just a 64 gigabyte SSD there is a 128 gigabyte option and the 4k speeds there of 43 write and 40 24 sorry read they're not bad at all too either says it it's not too bad actually better than the cube now the brand of the ssd is 4c which is a semi pretty much unknown kind of brand that i'm not really familiar with i mean it's not going to be as fast as the samsung evo drive or anything like that if you could get an m.2 which i think this drive is an m.2 drive don't think it's a m SATA. As far as I can find out looking at internet, I do think that that's the kind of format it is. So we have the micro SD card speeds here from the SD card reader. They're pretty average. I mean, they limit out at 25 read. It's kind of the speeds I'm seeing on mostly all of these tablets. Even the Bay Trails have that kind of a speed there for the micro SD card slot. So this one up the top here is the USB 3 port. And yes, it, you can see there it is working at full USB 3 speeds. Unlike the Cube i7, which would just limit at 40, would just get stuck at 40, wouldn't go any faster. So the port here, this plug that is connected and just down here, does work at full USB 3 speeds. And this port here, which I have my Logitech receiver hooked up to at the moment to run my mouse, these are the kind of speeds I could get out of it just here. So that's a USB 2, and it does max out at 40 there. So not too bad. Okay, so having a look, quick look at the screen, we can see that the resolution is a very nice and sharp 2560 by 1600. That's quite a large resolution there. And Windows scaling is actually running at a nice 200%, so it's just doubled the scaling there. So things tend to look okay there, so that we could run into a less scaling issues than say other displays running different different scaling there. So you can see at the moment it's extra large 200 which seems to fit the screen quite well as you can see. Just have a look at a couple of demo images here that I've taken on my Note 4 that I normally show on these tablets so you can have a look at what the screen actually looks like. There's uh, quite a bit of reflection here because you can see that uh, well it's not a full laminated display. It, I don't know if you can actually see that, but here you can see sort of a bit of a gap before the black of the bezel and the actual screen. There is a bit of a gap there, so that does account to a bit more reflection coming from it. The screen does seem quite nice. It is a Panasonic display according to HW Info. And those reds actually did look quite saturated there on the car when I saw it in person and took this photo. The Galaxy Note 4 camera does tend to take those kind of saturated images though. I do have a video clip here. This is in... Oh, I've gone into slideshow mode there. Let's get out of that. It's not going to let me. So if I run just a couple of trailers here that I have, I've got one video actually that I shot on 4K. When I was out having a look at those Volkswagen cars. So it handles 4K video just fine as you'd expect from a Core M. No problem there. You do get the bezels either side a little bit because there's a 16 by 10 ratio screen and not uh, a 16 by 9 there, so a bit of a bezel there. Now have a look at this Gravity trailer, this is a 2K clip here, and I will turn the volume right up here so we can just hear what the speakers sound like.
So overall, the speakers are a little bit disappointing to me. I think the the Chewy VI10 speakers actually sound better than that. They're a lot louder. And even the Peepo W3 and the W3F speakers tend to be a little bit louder than that. I do think they're kind of using the same hardware, at least they do look to be the same speakers, but they just don't seem to be as loud for some reason. If I go over here now and have a look at a benchmark I ran, so I ran Geekbench 3, and this is the result here, which is uh, not too bad. Single course score there, getting close up to around about 2,000. That's about double the Bay Trail Atom CPUs. And the multi-core score is around about the same as the Atom CPUs. This is actually a dual core with uh, two threads per core, so you get uh, four threads in total there. But it's not a full quad core like the Atoms. So a similar kind of score there. But what does really matter is the single core score there. That's more important. So if I go and have a look now just at the 3D Mark score that I ran. You'll be able to see here that uh, the score that I got is uh, around about the same as I got on the other Corum devices. If it's going to load up. This can be a bit buggy, this 3D Mark store application. It's been known to crash for me a few times. I did get 34,000, but for some reason it's not even going to load my score up there. Now these other two scores, iStorm and iStorm Extreme, they were just maxed out. So I got 36,000. It's finally loaded up. For some reason it hasn't shown these two scores were maxed, but it doesn't seem to have recorded that result. Not that it really matters there, but you can see that uh, there's the score there. So I'll just jump over into the device manager. And no, actually I'll run HW Info will probably be a bit easier to show you what components are inside the W8 here. Looks like I already have it running. For some reason the screen looks a bit blue there. There we go. Okay, so I've been running this in the background there, checking the temperatures. We did get up to 77 degrees. That was just running some of those benchmarks like Geekbench and 3D Mark. Actually, no, correction, up to 82. So 82 degrees was the highest point there on the Core M 5Y10, which is quite warm. Now, we'll do some further testing on that after running some gaming for a while which I'll have in another up and coming video. So do a bit of gaming on this and then I will tick, check the uh, temperatures and also the surface temperatures using a thermal probe there to check that. So if I close that out and just have a look at the devices, device manager here so I can show you exactly what components are inside. So the battery is 10,000 milliamps. And it's uh, charged by a 12 volt adapter, 3 amps. And the network is uh, Realtek. So the maximum speed here, well, even though it puts there 120, it's 150 megabits per second is the fastest this adapter can do. It's kind of disappointing that they're not going, these Chinese uh, tablet manufacturers, they aren't going for dual band 500 gigahertz and 2.4 cards now that are capable of that. Don't know why they're not doing it, or wireless AC, this is just wireless in. And that's connected up via USB 2 there, and then Bluetooth is Bluetooth 4, which should just be up here, where is it? You can see there the monitors, Panasonic. Audio is also Realtek audio card there. And the drive that uh, should show up here is that 4C 64 gigabyte SSD. So that's full uh, SATA 3 speeds. And there's the memory there because we have the processor which is the Intel Core M 5Y10. 
And the Bluetooth is also real tech. I just can't seem to find it in here. Why well, it's not coming up under network there. It should be there, but it seems to have disappeared on me for some reason. That's gone. Okay, so the on-screen keyboard fits in like that there, so it does take up a good half of the screen. And it uh, it seems to be quite responsive there for typing. It doesn't seem too bad at all. Uh, what I did actually spot though in my initial first unboxing and hands-on, that I do have a flake of dust that's under the screen there, which is a little bit annoying there. So I just load up Internet Explorer now and just quickly go into just a bit of BBC here and see how that loads up. First time actually visiting there, so nothing's cached, it's just having to load that all in. And my internet connection isn't the fastest. Screen seems responsive enough. I haven't noticed any lag or anything like that. It's not like I don't have to push any harder or whatever. There's no need for that. It just seems to be perfectly fine. The screen. Let's see if I can find some video and see how that loads up. For some reason that didn't load. What is it doing? Could be my internet connection, but there we go. It was loading, that's pretty slow. That would be probably down to my internet. And that is meant to be streaming some movie, I think, live. Murray vs. Muller. Oh, that's really slow to load in. I kind of have rural internet here, so it's not the fastest. So that all works there, no no problems there. I'm still putting the tablet through its paces. I will have some gaming tests up and coming soon. And I will upload some videos of that. Also check the temperatures just to see how hot it gets and what kind of level of throttling the tablet does have. But so far seems good. The build quality is slightly disappointing when I compare it with the Cube i7 Core M that I tested about a month ago. Uh, it just seems to be a step below that. Just notice a little bit more plasticky and just some of the ports are a little bit hard to plug in and that speck of dust that I mentioned and just some of the borders around here are a little bit sharp some of the plastics they've used just aren't really the highest of quality there but uh, so far it doesn't seem too bad and you can pick these up for around around about 460 US at the moment hopefully that price is going to drop down and this is from geekbuying.com, which I picked this one up. I had a few problems with AliExpress, so I just decided to opt for an online retailer there. And it didn't use them at all. Uh, the free space in Windows. Almost forgot about that one. You get about 48. 48 gigabytes free there. And I'll also show you that it comes with Windows single language, which is very interesting. So it's not Windows Pro. It's not Windows 8.1 Bing. 8.1 Pro, but it's this single language version here, which I'm a little worried about, that maybe if I factory reset this tablet, that it's going to be stuck in Chinese for me. Don't know. I haven't seen any Chinese characters whatsoever. So just going through the settings, menus, anything like that, change PC settings, I haven't seen anything around here that says or shows me any characters there in Chinese. So that is good, but, you know, the single language edition, I think that's that one that, that could be just in Chinese, and somehow they've installed English on it, or maybe it is an English ROM. I'll only know when I just factory reset it, so I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to hold off before that happens. Okay, so that's just a look. Uh, do keep an eye on my channel, because I will have more up-and-coming videos on this Pipo W8 if you are interested. Gaming videos and maybe a few other benchmarks and whatnot that I'll test out and some other things. So thank you for watching, and hopefully see you in the next video. Bye for now.